Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with an updated version of my main deck. I've been playing Rare Recruit since their release in 2018. I feel like the counter push that you get with the card is just simply unmatched, and the fact that you can apply aggression on both sides is really fun. Because if your opponent slips up once, you can just take their other tower. And because you're attacking all sides, there's just a lot more going on, creating more stress for your opponent and way more fun for you. The massive change to the deck was substituting out the Royal Hogs for Goblin Drill and Wall Breakers. Goblin Drill is easily top two win conditions in the game, and pro players are playing it in almost all of their decks. For one less elixir than Rail Hogs, you can get directly on your opponent's tower. And if they don't have enough elixir or they try to ignore it like a miner, they're gonna lose everything. Wall Breakers bait out your opponent's logs, bar barrels, and spells so your rare recruits can get way more value. And if you push your cannon cart with Spear Goblins and Wall Breakers, you'll make the cannon cart one of the fastest cards in the game. The offensive potential with direct damage that you get from the Goblin Drill and Speedy Cannon Cart has taken rare recruits to the next level. Let's go jump straight into ladder and assert dominance. A whole lot of love to everyone that's using Critic Code Sir Tide to support the channel. All right, so jumping into this one, we're just gonna go for Wall Breakers in the back. That's my favorite attack with this deck because you're gonna be able to split up your opponent's elixir and if they drop something like a skeleton army or a goblin gang you just log it and then one of the wall breakers will connect to the tower so it's pretty fun to do that okay so he's got bowler and he's got lumberjack so it's gotta be bowler lumberjack balloon freeze so i'm gonna play really aggressive here in the left hand side because he doesn't end up having enough elixir to just stop uh both of this so if i go like cannon cart to distract the bowler and stop that and then the hunter splashes onto the tower then i can also go in for wall breakers to push the cannon cart i thought he would bar barrel that Ah, oh, it's fine though, right? I think that the wall breakers might be able to push the cannon cart closer to the tower in time. Oh, it was so close, but both the wall breakers connect, so I guess uh, I can't really complain about that. That was awesome. So if you guys didn't know, use your spear goblins, or you can use your wall breakers and you can push your cannon carts because they're moving so fast, it speeds up the cannon cart that's in front of it because they don't have any time to waste. And then you lay waste to your opponent's tower. So love doing that, speeding up the cannon cart with spear goblins or wall breakers every chance I can. Anyway, I, I really don't feel comfortable cycling my hunter here because we've identified that our opponent has lumberjack balloon freeze. So if I have that out of cycle, we can easily get punished. The only time that I played really aggressively without my hunter was when I knew that he was going to focus on defending and not going for a balloon freeze all in me because the lumberjack wasn't in cycle anymore so i think this is great we're just going to try to divide and conquer we know that the cannon card is going to be our best answer to the bowler amazing answer to mega knight and elite barbarians too by the way if you're playing against those but yeah i'm not going to cycle my hunter early on here i rather go in for the cannon card because it's just a safer play overall yo let's get it so we know he's going to freeze i want to go in for a hunter as soon as the bowler locks onto the other thing no that's bad I need to go in for a fireball here because I think the hunter's getting distracted. <laughs> I thought I timed it perfectly. I thought I was doing the exquisite plays and I messed up, but it is what it is. We're going to go for wall breakers here again to push the cannon cart. If the cannon cart locks onto the tower, we're going to win the game. Look at it. It locked onto the tower because of the wall breakers. And then the cannon cart is also getting targeted first, so both the wall breakers connect. So as you guys can see, if your opponent drops a small spell on top of the cannon cart and the wall breakers, usually it won't kill the wall breakers. And then because the cannon cart's in front, it's tanking. So then the wall breakers will survive and then lock them at the tower at a very limited amount of HP. So that's one of my favorite card combinations is wall breakers plus cannon cart, even better than going in for the spear goblins. Okay, so we're gonna go for a hunter here. Fortunately, he doesn't have bowler in the side that he wants. We're just holding our fireball so we can always counter the balloon for no damage. And then he's going to go for the Inferno Dragon push, but I mean, that's not going to do too much. We've got Spear Goblins, we've got Goblin Drill, and we're taking both towers out here. That's my mission. I don't want to take just one. I want to double up on the fun. So I'm going to go Goblin Drill here. I'm going to Wall Breakers on the left because he just ended up using his Barbarian Barrel. It's going to be harder for him to defend the Spear Goblins and the Wall Breakers here. I think the Wall Breaker connects there, and I'm going to Fireball, and I'm going to go in for the Log in the right. Let me take them both at the same time. No. <laughs> All right, guys. You know what's bad when your opponent can't take one of your towers, and you're just fighting to take two of them. This deck makes it a competition against yourself to see which tower you can take first. Jumping into the game against Mr. Fish, we are catching a Royal Giant right out of the jump. It's ridiculous to see people cycle their win condition at the start without even knowing what the deck is that they're playing against. Like, I could hypothetically have P.E.K.K.A. and Mini P.E.K.K.A. and then you would lose the game. Or I could have Elite Barbarians bridge spammed at the river and you would have dropped your Whale Giant right into that. Ladder players are a different breed and they do not care about consequences. So I'm going to go in for a cannon card here and I'm going to log on top of the skeleton barrel so we don't take any damage from the skeletons. And genuinely, whenever we're in a situation where we're able to do dual lane aggression, we're up elixir, you guys already know I'm definitely going to take that advantage. I kind of want a fireball on top of the minions here so then we're able to get more damage with the cannon cart. Oh my gosh! <laughs> if only I was able to fireball on the barbarians first. Can we say that's a prediction? It totally wasn't. 
I just was up a bit and I was like, we can do this. We can get more value. But unfortunately, he ended up uh, getting one of the barbarians left alive and was able to kill the cannon card. But that was probably the most valuable fireball of my life, at least to this day. Yeah, so I guess the most valuable fireball of the day so far, which is not saying too much, but it makes me feel pretty happy. I'm going to go for a cannon card in the same side as the Musketeer. Now we know he's got Royal Giant with Barbarians and Minions and Skeleton Barrel. So just an all-around crazy deck. I want to go in for Recruits here so we can tank for the cannon card and then probably get a log down. I can't afford the Elixir in time, so maybe the cannon card's going to die. But as long as he ends up losing the Musketeer, the Skeletons aren't going to be able to kill the rest of our stuff. Yo, let's go. We can go Wall Breakers and then the Recruits are tanking. So both of those connect. And if he went Minions, then they would die to the Wall Breakers. So he can't do that. That's hilarious. We're back in business already. And we know what his card cycle is. We know he's going to have minions and he's going to have barbarians. So either or, I don't think are going to be that great for him. I wonder if he's going to barbarians on top of the goblin drill. That's what I would do if I was him. So I could hypothetically go in for a fireball on that. So what I'm planning on doing is going in for a goblin drill here and then fireballing on the musketeer and the barbarians. I think he's going to drop it. So I'm going to fireball here and then I can go in for the hunter. Unfortunately, he doesn't. He goes in for a Skeleton Army instead, which is fine because I can log back everything and then I think the Hunter stops the Royal Giant with no damage. That's hilarious. You can go in for predictions with this deck when you're up Elixir and then not get punished because, I mean, your Elixir count is going to make sure that you're able to defend regardless. All right, I want to go Goblin Drill here just in case and then it locks onto the hat instead of hitting my tower, hopefully. Uh, I wasn't able to get it down fast enough. That is so much damage. That is ridiculous amount of value for our opponent. Okay, we got to come back. We're in a terrible spot, guys. This game is getting a little bit too close for comfort. But his log is out of cycle. I think he's going to have to go for a skeleton army. No, he went in. Arrows. I didn't see that card before. That's not as part of the plan, man. That's definitely not part of the plan. Wait, he can fireball and arrows and just do whatever he wants at this point. I think he has the skeleton army. Does he have elixir? He doesn't. He gets barbarians down, but it's not fast enough. The cannon card snuck through and we fireball and win the game. Oh my gosh. Here's the thing, guys. I would have gotten logged and arrowed out. But because I was able to sneak the cannon cart through with that really aggressive play, we were able to walk away with a win in a situation that I never thought was possible. The sneaky cannon cart had the major catch of the day with that juicy W. All right, let's see if we can keep up the streak. You guys already know the deal. We're going to go rush through with our spear goblins, and that's what's up. I love when our opponents miss it or just eat the damage because that is ridiculous value. He had Bard Barrel, but he just ate 400 damage for no reason. What are people doing right now? You know, he's top 10,000 in the game, but he's still eating damage like a snack. All right, maybe we can go in for a Fireball here on top of the double Zappies and then the Cannon Cart can find its way through. Ah, uh, a lot of times people will not expect you to Fireball and stuff like that, and then you can get a lot of extra damage. Okay, if he fly machines, I'm going to be in a bad spot, so I got to go Spear Goblins up top, so then, you know, the Hunter's going to be able to finish off the rest of his units. Wait, is the Hunter going to survive? He's a survivor. He's not getting voted off the island today. Let's go, baby. Wait, can we push him with the Wall Breakers? I think so, but was that the right strategy? Yeah, I mean, he got pushed closer to the tower, but then we just got arrowed, so that, that didn't work out so well for us. Uh, well played to our opponent. I'm just going to eat the rest of the damage. Here's the thing, guys. When you are in a bad spot, you kind of just have to accept it. When life gives you lemons, you got to squeeze the most out of them and hopefully find some way through because we're, we're in a bad spot, but maybe I can end up getting like a positive elixir trade here or there or catch my opponent off guard and get a goblin drill to win us the game. Like right there, you know, he cycled the bar, bro. He's not supposed to do that. Now he doesn't have it for the recruits and he doesn't end up having that for the goblin drill. So as long as you just don't get too down on yourself when you take a ton of damage, you can always bounce your way back up. I'm going to go for recruits, and then I think I'm going to fireball. Look at that. That's beautiful. Now he doesn't have much elixir. He's got to go like goblin cage or something. I think the cannon cart locks on a tower. Because if he goes goblin cage, then we can go for wall breakers on the other side. Okay. Yeah, never mind. He's going to end up going in for recruits. I didn't think he was going to have elixir for that. Both, both the wall breakers should connect to the tower, so that's something good for us. And spear goblins here. I'm expecting him to probably go for arrows, or eh, I would expect him to arrows this. We'll see, though. Nope, he's just going to let it do what it would do. All right, we don't have Fireball and Cycle for the Royal Hogs, which is our best answer. Very unfortunate. I think I'll have to Hunter and I'll have to log it if he does decide to, to do that. Otherwise, I can just go in for the Cannon Cart in the back. Yeah, I'm going to Cannon Cart in the back and build up a bigger push. Genuinely, the way that I like to play this deck is going in for Cannon Cart and then Recruits at the River. And then you can kind of just do other stuff depending on what your opponent's planning. I'm going to save the Fireball for the Flying Machine and all of his other junk. He did go for a Barb Barrel, so I can go in for the Goblin Drill in the back. Super hard for him to defend a Goblin Drill in the back when all of his units are stacked up in front. And we can Fireball on the Flying Machine. Oh, wait, that kind of just walked away. Still ended up getting hit. Uh, I usually miss Flying Machines when they walk away from my Fireball. I don't know how I hit that. I got super lucky there. Not going to fib. 
Okay, I can recruit here at the river as well, and then he's gonna recruit as well. But I, I have logs, so I think I win this interaction. The barb drill isn't gonna do near as, as much. I think that I can maybe go in for another goblin drill and wall breakers. If he goes in for a fly machine, I'm definitely just gonna hit it with a fireball, not try to get risky for the tower damage. It's just not worth. I love to go in for a drill with the cannon cart tanking, even if the cannon cart doesn't do damage, as long as it's tanking for the tower. And then the cannon cart's able to kill the zappies. No way, I'm getting so lucky. This guy must be insanely tilted. Here's the thing, I can go for cannon cart and wall breakers and then go and push the cannon cart again, hopefully. No, the wall breakers went in front. Okay, well that was actually pretty good because we were able to knock back the goblin cage and then fireball here again. And the reason why I'm fireballing is obvious, like I just can't afford to allow this guy to go in for any rail hogs. I always need to make sure that we clean up everything that he drops. He's recruiting, but the goblin drill went directly onto the tower because we switched up the goblin drill placement. He thought it was gonna be in the back. Let's go, guys. All right, we know for a fact that he's going to all in me here with Rail Hogs at any second. So I got to go Recruits again. I think that the Recruits at the River will win us this interaction. If I can log on top of the Rail Hogs on the other side, maybe we're going to be chilling. He's going to Arrows, but he doesn't hit the Spear Goblins. Oh, let's go, baby. Let's get it. That's so much damage to the right-hand side, but it's not even equating to the left-hand lane, right? Okay, no, he's back in business. He has more damage in the right now. What's up, though, dude? We got a Can Cart and Hunter counter pushing the left-hand side, so I don't think he's going to be ready for that. Especially if I can Fireball back the, the Zappies or the Recruits. I think the goblins just lock under the tower. He's got to get arrows down. Those goblins are locking and loading. And I love the fact that you can push your opponent's units away with your log or fireball so then the goblins can hit directly onto the tower. So even though we had a terrible start and I made a couple misplays allowing the rail hogs to do 2,000 damage, we were still able to bounce back. That's the power of this new meta Rail Recruits Goblin Drill deck. It has devastating damage potential, especially since the Goblin Drill can get directly on top of the tower, so it gives you a more reliable source of damage than Rail Hogs or any other win condition. After we bounce back with a comeback, now we're 8,900 in the world. All right, we got another one against Roberto. Definitely want to keep up our win streak that we've been having, and he's going to go for a Hog Rider, so I think that's going to get one hit on our tower, but not to today, brother. So I'm going to go Goblin Drill in front. I'm going to Wall Breakers on the other side. So we just apply aggression on every single angle. Gets really overwhelming for opponents at this type of point. Because the Hunter could splash onto the tower when the Goblin Drill's in front. So then the Hunter can do splash damage and do a lot of value in situations that they're not expecting. If they're over committing on defense against the Wall Breakers on the other side, it can just get really tricky and sticky. So I love going in for the Goblin Drill in the front when the Hunter is counter pushing. Just because if they drop stuff in front, then you can get more damage from the Hunter than you can even with the Goblin sometimes. This guy is likely running a 2.6 Hog Rider deck, which is not a good matchup for us because we only have Hunter, so this might be one of the more difficult matchups with this deck. We'll see what we can do. We'll see if we can pull this one through. All right, so Spear Goblins on the left-hand side are just going to get ignored, so that's pretty nice for us. I think we can do some split lane shenanigans and aggression. I usually don't do this, but I'm going to Recruits in the back. The reason why I don't like Recruits in the back is because it gives our opponent the availability of going for Earthquake or Log on them, and it's just not the best in that position because... If you drop them at the river, they're not going to be able to hit the tower, right? They wouldn't be able to ever Earthquake and then hit the tower there. Okay, so the Archer Queen is really annoying, but I can go for a Cannon Card here and be okay. I think the Giant Skeleton after the nerf is a massive impact. Like, that, that thing just did not do as much as it used to. Okay, he's going to log, but the Cannon Card kills the Queen, which is extremely nice for us, because now we can go for a Goblin Drill in the back, and then go in for Wall Breakers, and his Cannon won't be able to hit the Goblin Drill. So that's what I'm going to go for here. We're going to go in for the Goblin Drill, and then we're going to go in for the Wall Breakers. We're going to try to time this nicely, and we'll see what he decides to do. Oh, he's going to go Giant Skeleton. He thought it was going to be in the front. And both the Wall Breakers are going to connect now. Let's go. He has to go Skeletons, but they're not coming down in time. In fact, this first Skeletons died to the Wall Breaker that connected. And then oh, there's just nothing left. He's got the Giant Skeleton, and we're bringing the Skeletons down to the depths of despair. They're going to go to the Tombstone, man. You don't have any friends. You don't have any comrades. You don't have anyone else to share your Skeleton love with. Okay, he's going to Earthquake. I don't think that's a great play because I don't have a building. So, I mean, you're just running head first right into a Hunter. And then I can go in for recruits because the hunter is going to go in front, but the cannon cart won't. So this is extremely nice for us to do because if I go in for any really aggressive play, I want to make sure that our opponents add a limited amount of elixir so then they can't defend everything at once. I want to bait out the log or the archer queen ability. Oh, the archer queen ability didn't even come down. What is he doing? He's saving the log. Okay, that's smart. I think I'm going to go in for spear goblins after you uh, could have logged the goblins. So then you can't hit everything at once. So that's really important for us. I'm going to hunter here. I can wall breakers at the right hand side. Try to bait out skeletons or cannon or something. Just trying to get a good trade for us. He can't skeleton, so he's just going to eat it. All right, that's interesting. Hmm. Wow, he's just going to all in me in the left hand lane. He has no damage there, though. What is he doing? This guy is one wild child. Oh, let's go. This is so good for us because I think the cannon card's going to stay alive. No. No, the Archer Queen also is able to do mad damage there too. Well played, man. Well played. 
I'm going to Spear Goblins and Wall Breakers because he just used his log, so it's going to be harder for him to defend this. And I can Fireball on top of the cannon, so then the Wall Breakers connected to the tower. I think I played that really well because he didn't have log in cycle, and he didn't have cannon in cycle anymore because we Fireballed it. So I was like, I'm guaranteed to win the game if one of the Wall Breakers connects to the tower. Goblin Drill is going to drill him down, and he's laughing with the Goblin Emoji. It's really fitting to lose to the Goblin Drill with the Laughing Goblin. Oh my gosh. I think our goblins weren't laughing at you. I think they're a little bit nicer than that. So after that dominant W, now we're 8,100 in the world and the win streak is still alive. Let's get it. Critical strike. Dude, I'm ready to give you the most critical strike that you've never seen. I want to go wall breakers in the back just because it's really obnoxious to play against. And I can go and split up the, the aggression with the goblin drone left hand side too. So then it's going to be harder for him to defend. If I had logged that, maybe one of the wall breakers could have connected. Oh. I think I should have logged the skeletons and had one of the wall breakers connect and then have the other wall breaker rush towards the tower and left hand side. Okay, so playing against Lava Hound, you guys already know the deal. I need to save that hunter. If I don't save the hunter, I'm probably going to become the hunted. It is the only great air answer that we have. I guess spear goblins are looking at me and they're like, Jake, you saying I'm not an air answer? I'm going to work my way on the Lava Hound. I'm going to prove you wrong. Okay, I definitely need to go for a hunter here. And then I think... Uh, this is really scuffed because if I don't fireball this, I'm in a bad spot. But if I do fireball this, I'm also in a bad spot because I have no elixir. Okay, so he arrowed. I guess he's going to do more damage with the Barbarians counter pushing. I wish we pulled more of the Barbarians to the left-hand side, guys. Why were they stragglers? Why were they stranded in the right-hand side and they didn't see the light? They didn't want to go towards what was right. It's all good. I guess I can go in for a Goblin Drill here and then follow up with Spear Goblins because he just used his arrows, so it's going to be harder for him to defend this. He goes in for a Mega Minion. Maybe we can get those Goblins spawn in the back while the Spear Goblins are in the front. Yo, let's go! We're back in business. I don't have to respond to the Mega Minion. I don't have to respond to the Tombstone. And we're currently in a really good spot because he wasted six Elixir. Six Elixir that he probably needs to stop the Cannon Cart. Okay, so I'm expecting this guy to go in for a Lob Hound soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Recruits in the back. I hate doing this again because our opponent could Earthquake. They could also go in for a Log. But usually when they have Lava Hound, they're not going to have any of those spells. So I feel like that's an okay strategy to cycle that in the back if I don't have anything else. Also, they will protect my Hunter. So I can maybe get right up close and personal on that as quickly as we can. And then I can go for Wall Breakers in the left. And see if he Fly Machines. I'm going to get ready for the Fireball as quickly as I can on that. And just remove that as fast as possible so then he doesn't have as many distractions for us and as many damage answers as well. So the Hunter is going to finish off the entire Lava Hound and the Barbarians. Wow, dude, you deserve a raise. I would pay way more Elixir for you. I'm going to go in for a Goblin Drill on defense just in case he wants to go for arrows. I think I would have been fine. I don't know if I needed that. I genuinely think I did not need that at all. But we baited out a Mega Minion. Because my play was so dumb, he didn't expect it. He expected me to cycle back to the Hunter because that was the right strategy, but I messed it up. Oh, that was pretty funny. Wait, I can Fireball here. And then anything else that he drops goes into the wall breaker. So it's going to be harder for him to like spam us. We can go for spear goblins and then go for the drill directly onto the tower with the wall breakers and all this other stuff. It's impossible for him to break through. Because I think the hunter is able to two tap the balloon. With the goblin drill on him, he can't even use another spell to finish off the hunter. Wait, this deck is so good against Lava Hound. This wasn't even close. Every single time that he went in for offense, we shut it down with the hunter for a huge positive elixir trade while we were able to keep up the aggression on the other side, and he wasn't able to dedicate too much elixir like arrows fireball on the hunter, because he had to always focus on defending. If he arrows fireballed on the hunter, he'd have lost the tower and lost both sides actually to the rail recruits. This deck is just way too cost efficient, and now we are sitting pretty at 4,000 in the world. Just taking a look at our battle log, that was nine wins in a row. That is insane. Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and I hope you have an incredible rest of your day.